Boys Lines. As Boys Lines. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. You're listening to the As Bold as Lions podcast. Hello and welcome to another edition of the As Bold as Lions podcast. So good to have you join me today. My name is Derek and we are in the middle episode of a three-part series called Living Behind Enemy Lines. You might be asking, what does that title mean? Well, for starters, if I can have you hit pause right now and go back to part one of this series, that would probably be the best way to just get you caught up to speed. Uh, it's a good place to, to go and then come back here. And, and that first episode is about half an hour. It's a lot of content, but sets up the whole um, point of where we're going. Um, but behind enemy lines, just very quickly, it, it means we're, we're in or we're under enemy territory. doesn't mean necessarily we're under enemy authority, but we are in their camp, and so to speak. And nothing changes as far as what we're called to do. We're still called to live out our faith. We're called to preach the gospel. And we're to endure under persecution if we should, if we should face it. Whatever your thoughts are on America at this point, I would I would say our spiritual climate has changed in recent years. Um, our culture as a whole is in decline, but the the church itself is is in decline, and the influence of Christianity on the culture has lessened. And in the the flip side of that, we've had the rise of paganism and um, pagan thought. And so, for all of that, we we should be able to say that's that's a wake up call to us you know wow things are pretty bad and part of what i, I talked about last time if you if you go back it it's this red pill moment it's this spiritual wake up call and the the idea that we we have to be um sounding the alarm you know be aware of wow this is this is where things are at and and, and telling people telling ourselves first and foremost and then telling others but what is the call we are to take if, if we are behind enemy lines? I, like I said, I don't think it changes from, from day to day or year to year. But our awareness of it and perhaps the immediacy of it right now and our response, that may need to change. Just how motivated we are to, to act on the gospel, the Great Commission, those sorts of things. In uh, the brevity of life, the, the short window we have... All that must influence our call and um, our boldness with the message, we, we, we have to consider it. There's so many that are, are praying for lost family members, lost sons and daughters. There's a, a spouse or a grandparent and so on. And really there's this immediate circle of influence, the, the audience that we really have the ability to speak most directly into and then taking it a step wider out, there's, there's another audience that um, we, have, we have some influence over as well. And it may be through our jobs, um, through our school, just in our communities, our neighborhoods, um, maybe even our churches. Those are, are other areas that we have to consider as well. Because I think as Christians, we see the, the giant that's before us and, and the... Um, the culture being just seeming like it's, it's turning away and becoming more and more wicked. I think we take bite sized chunks as best we can and just, just work on those relationships, work on those people that we can talk to that we are with every day. And from there, this thing just kind of builds upon that. And we go out and, and continue to, to preach. We don't have to win everybody over, but if we win one, or two, and it's not us winning them; it's the Lord doing it through us. But He um, 
he just he can continue to build his kingdom as he uh, desires. So today and next week get a little bit more practical in in this whole discussion, and I, I hope it's helpful, um, or at least just some good reminders for you as you're considering everything. And uh, if you're um, if you're a person who likes to have their Bible handy, if you like to kind of have a, a notepad and you you jot some things down, that's um, just something I would encourage if you want to do that. Um, I usually try to incorporate some scripture and, and I'll also just let you know kind of the, the points as we're going through this kind of like a, a three point sermon. So, um, today's is no different, but as we talk about living behind enemy lines, realizing the call, what does that mean? Well, the first point is in these days, the gospel must be first. First Corinthians 15 verse three. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. This first point's a little bit shorter because I think it's it's pretty self-explanatory and it gets to the point. Um, For Paul, the message of the gospel had to be central. If if you're in the progression of of the year and and you're listening through this, we, we just celebrated Easter Resurrection Sunday very recently. And you know that's a big date in our our calendar as Christians is uh, a thing that we kind of build up to and and there's good reason for that. But I think we always we always put a lot of emphasis on this one day when we know that it's beyond just one day or one week, and we can't just always move on to other things. That we have to keep coming back with a a laser like focus on the cross and on that message of the gospel. And that has to be just year round day in and day out, month in and month out. Why? It's because the gospel is transformative. It's the only hope for our world. We, we want the culture to change. We want to see some real awakenings and shifts to happen, but it doesn't happen without the message of the gospel. It doesn't happen through all the do good stuff that we can preach and uh, social awareness and all that stuff. It's, it is through the cross, through realizing our sin and our need for a savior. So we have to proclaim Christ first. He's the, he's the means to, to restore us, to transform us. Does this world know its need for a savior? Sadly, no, most, most do not for the most part. And that's where we have to be intentional. We look for those conversations, um, talking about that some more coming up. But we pray for the open doors that God would give us. You know, just going into the day saying, God, help me be aware of of where there's a need for someone to hear about you and and that I can speak into that. And if we're honest, he, he gives us those opportunities and sometimes we just miss them. And we're, we're either distracted or we're, not wanting to to really go down that that path and that conversation with somebody, I think we have to be aware of them, and if we are, then take that bold step to to speak out, especially in these times when we we don't know how many conversations we're going to have with somebody. We don't know how many chances we're going to be given to to say, "Hey, can I talk to you about Jesus?" Um, and maybe that's not the line you open with, but it gets to that point through building that trust and, and having that relationship. So in all in all, to, to end this point, the gospel must be first. That's what Paul was talking about. That's what he he first led with, and that's that's what we must put before, our, um, before ourselves as we consider this call as well. Secondly, lesser things must be lesser. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, or and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. There's a phrase that I've heard um, for many years in, in growing up in the church and being in uh, Christian circles, and that is to major on the majors and minor on the minors. What is essential and what is non-essential? Well, some essentials, I believe, and I think we're in good company if we, if we say some of these things. It's um, Scripture is God's Word. The Christians should be affirming of it and unified around it. 
Uh, also the gospel, it's I already mentioned again, the first point, but it's central, central to our faith. It's um, the basic tenets of faith in Christ. Um, Jesus is the son of God. We, we believe he was sinless. He never sinned. He's fully human, fully divine. He took our sin upon himself on the cross so that we didn't have to die. Just like we talked about at Easter, uh, he died, was buried. Three days later, he rose again. And he ascended to heaven, and he sits at the right hand of the Father. If there's any disagreement on those points right there, that's um, a pretty big thing to to not, not agree upon. So that is the, the gospel kind of in a nutshell. Other essentials are things to which the Bible speaks of um, as affirming and good for the life of the believer. Um, things like going to church reading the scripture, um, prayer, tithing, practices that really flow out of and flow from being a Christian and, and having the Holy Spirit indwelling in you. Things that we can go to, especially a lot of the Old uh, New Testament, sorry, New Testament, and we can look at um, post-Christ's resurrection and ascension, what did the church then do and, and what are the, the teachings and the instructions there? Those are things that we can for sure model as well. Um, things that the Bible speaks to as harmful and sinful for the believer or for anyone, but uh, certainly for those who are already in Christ. And so again, this, these are essentials that I would uh, cause us to consider. Practices that are outside the bounds for a Christian. We can certainly look at sexual things. Uh, homosexuality, fornication, adultery, you can go, go on down that list. Again, the New Testament gives us a lot of good, clear guidance there. Uh, other things that are pretty obvious, murder, witchcraft, idolatry, idolatry, and so on. And just anything where it seems there's a pretty clear mandate against this and there's an established punishment for people that persist in this sort of lifestyle or uh, or do such things. So we're talking about essentials. We're talking about the things to major on, things to kind of be unified around. That's kind of some of the lists that I would come up with and um, some others that um, really identify us as, as uh, Christians. Not saying the list is the do's and don'ts, but... Um, I think the reflection is the works and the fruit that is produced. Do they reflect back upon us as being indwelled by the Holy Spirit and Christ at work? So what about some lesser things? We talked about some of the major things. What are some lesser things? Well, I think as we're getting closer and closer to end times, we have to stop getting hung up over the things that do not determine a person's salvation. Um, things that uh, are, seem obvious, but I know we can get hung up on them. Um, perhaps how often do we take the Lord's Supper? The various do's and don'ts. Um, getting hung up over celebrating various holidays and where they are tied into biblical events. Um, some that don't celebrate regardless because they believe there's there's some pagan undertones or there's some things that influence these these holidays and that's a whole other discussion, but it's just worth noting that it's it's kind of a subset, if you will, of of Christianity. That um, in my own mind, it's it's perhaps not a healthy thing for us to to camp out there so much, and and again, it's um, keeping us from really getting the gospel out to people because we're putting this in front of people before they can really. Um, know and come come to understand Christ. And then also just the end times timelines, trying to figure out things like pre-trib, mid-trib, uh, post, rapture, that kind of stuff, and just all of those um, important things, but not essential things, things that don't, whether you believe one part or something different and somebody else, your brother in Christ, not going to keep you from being able to go to heaven someday and, and be saved. But uh, sometimes interesting things to talk about. Sometimes we spend a lot of time, um, I would say maybe waste some time camping out on that when we should be focusing on 
preaching the good news and just trying to reach as many as we can with the time that we have. Again, these lesser things, they're, they're genuine things, but they do not determine someone's salvation. And any lesser thing can be made into a major thing. But the question must be, what, is, what does the scripture say about this? Another good consideration is, if I do this particular thing, am I bringing undue harm unto someone else because of the quote-unquote freedom I am displaying by doing it? That we do not want to cause another person in the faith to stumble, um, maybe a more immature believer, younger in their faith, whatever, to stumble because of the practice or the thing that we adhere to, that because of our freedom in Christ we... um, uh, display to them and, and can cause them to, to sin or stumble. Things we want to avoid. Lesser things that we want to not um, use that keep somebody out of the kingdom. So I hope that makes sense. And, and there's a lot more we could dig in there. I don't want to spend a ton of time on that. But in these days, the gospel must be first. The lesser things must be indeed lesser. And finally, we have to have our spiritual antenna up. Talked about this a little bit already, just being aware of what's around us, our surroundings and the conversations, the situations that we might um, be led into by the Spirit because we're aware of, hey, this is going on and and I'm, I'm being called and led to, to say something here. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, be watchful, stand firm in the faith act like men, be strong. I love that last part. Act like men, be strong. In these days of peril, of being behind enemy lines, I'll be honest, I do it. I think a lot of us do it. We can have a very inward focused mentality about how we look at the world. What, you know, what are my own needs? Are they being met? How do I stay safe? Keep my family safe. Just keep the status quo, and um, hoping at some point things are going to normalize and and get back to uh, how they were maybe a few years ago. And this is a side note, but I hate, and I will always hate this term, new normal. You guys have probably heard it. Maybe maybe it doesn't bother you at all, but it, it just bugs me for some reason. And that's just an aside, but I think there's been so much propaganda over the past few years and it's it's kind of forced us into adopting these terms and and just being accepting of them and saying well that's yeah we're in a new normal that's just how it is you know blah 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 i i just refuse there's certain terms that i I try to just not allow myself to say because there's power in our world our words and uh you know jesus is the same yesterday today and forever so there's no new Jesus, there's no new whatever, there's nothing new under the sun. So um, again, that's my sideline rant, but uh, that phrase, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm trying to just strike it from my vocabulary as much as possible. One of the hardest things to do is to keep looking outward and to keep facing upward. I talked about it's very easy to turn inward and, and just shut down. But that's our call in Christ. If the gospel is essential, if we are looking to major on the majors, then we are looking for ways to insert that message into our conversations and into our interactions. We don't do it very often because we're afraid. Uh, Be honest, that's, that's why we are held back. We know this time that we're living in, it's emboldened many who do not hold the same beliefs as us to uh, just kind of bring fear into, into our world because we, you know, they don't hold uh, that Jesus is King and Lord. And, and so it's been hard to, to stand against that. We want to avoid some of those confrontations with those people. It gets very ugly, very fast. But was that the attitude of, first century Christians, people like Peter and Paul, they were repeatedly outnumbered by the surrounding culture, the greater portion of the, the influence that they had, but it didn't keep them from preaching their message. 
So having your antenna up means that you're looking all the time for those opportunities. And often it's just a one-on-one type of a thing. You know, maybe someone makes an offhand remark and, you know, it might be in person or online. Can we make that an opportunity to proclaim Christ? Yes, we can pray with somebody. We can share a verse to them. We can just extend the love of Christ to them somehow. And those are things we're, we're called to do anyway, but I think we're, we're taking note of it or need to, especially right now, that the, the church has, has failed for a long time of, uh, of keeping us outwardly focused and on the gospel. We've, we've been a lot about self-help and, and uh, comforting messages and things that just kind of warm us and, and help us. But have we been willing to put that aside and, and, and look all the time at the, the harvest fields that are, that are ripe and that are ready to be brought in? And just again, talking about that new normal, the, uh, the other things that we've gone through in the past couple of years, the, the social distancing, mask wearing, um, however you feel about that. Uh, but just this being cautious, being kind of unsure about anyone who might get too close to you, monitoring our interactions with other people and, and just being aware of that all the time. You know, it's, re- it's led to this breakdown where we've, we've really become an um, impersonal society, impersonal. Christ touched lepers. What's our excuse? For those who, who won't respond or are standoffish, you know, there's, there's not a whole lot else you can do. I get that, but you can pray for them. And there's others who are just hungry for it and they will respond and they will be grateful for what you did. And again, we, we don't control the, the results. We leave that up to the Lord. We're just called to be obedient. We're called to take that great commission message and go out. So this is all getting a little more practical as we're talking about living for Jesus behind uh, enemy lines, being in the enemy's camp. And we're going to get a little bit more practical again next time. And if I haven't offended you yet, I I just might, just a kind of fair warning. Um, I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes. My goal, my goal is to, to speak the truth in love. And I hope that comes through every, every episode, even things that aren't maybe so, uh, in your face as, as these messages are. And I would love to hear from you. If you've gone through the first episode, you've gone through this one. Now you're kind of pondering where, where do I go from here? If, if you have questions, if there's maybe some interactions that you're sensing you need to take or make uh, the most of an opportunity, uh, feeling that urge to say something, I would love to pray for you in that, to have some boldness, to be equipped, to be ready. And again, um, you can email me, info at DerekCharlesJohnson.com. The biggest thing we have to get over is fear. Overcoming fear, not being worried what someone's going to think, that's the reality we've, we've all got to start to embrace more and more of, just to be bold, to have that boldness of a Paul that, that says, you know what, if I live or die, it, it doesn't matter. You know, to live is Christ, to die is gain. And to kind of not hold so tightly onto this life that we're, we're ready for the next if it were to come, whenever it would come. We're not trying to offend for the sake of offending. That's not what the gospel is about. Um, but we need to speak boldly if we're called to. If we don't speak, someone else's life might hang in the balance because of it. Guys, I love you. I'm grateful to spend this time uh, on a regular basis with you. And again, I appreciate you just sharing these episodes with whoever um, you think needs to hear them. And I pray that the Lord would use it and multiply it. Our time is short. May we use it to the fullest extent possible. Amen. Be very very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. Every time it just feels like that kind of just caps it off and and, and hopefully just sends you out the door uh, ready to step into your world 
with this truth, with this message, with a, a, a bold attitude in your heart and your mind that says, God, I want to be used by you today. I love you. I trust you. Um, just use me in, in any way you see fit. It's all for your kingdom. It's all for your glory. Guys, have a great day. We will see you again soon. God bless. Hey guys, this is Derek Charles Johnson. You have been listening to the As Bold as Lions podcast. I am a blogger, a songwriter, an artist. And if you've been encouraged by this podcast, please go ahead and subscribe and share and head over to DerekCharlesJohnson.com for more encouraging content. God bless.